So I'm playing some of that, some more of that Hensout armor. And I'm just going to be pointing out a couple particular plays that I feel are relatively important to note, uh, to take note of. So we start out here. I'm going in, I'm going up second. That's really good for me. That means I can over invest in tempo and not be punished for it. Because then I'll be able to force him to pass and win same cards, which is always nice. Start out with a good old siege support, which I finally learned the name of. <laughs> What's funny is I used to play a ton of Northern Realms back in the day. I just don't really play it that much anymore. The, uh, once the armor archetype really rose up, I stopped playing it. So, of course, I get the, the key combo off, get all my siege supports out. Uh, one thing to note is that I'm placing in a certain order. So I'm placing my leader next to the first one. It doesn't really matter where I, I the whole point is that you're supposed to have one crewman, one crewman, one crewman and one crewman. So now whenever I place a machine in between those, it gets the benefit of two crewmen. So you, and generally speaking, you don't really want to line it up all in the same row, especially against uh, Ethne, because they're probably going to have a Marigold Hailstorm. And if you give them a really good Marigold Hailstorm early, they're going to play a Marigold Hailstorm later with their leader ability. Also, one really nice thing is that I have a spy. So if I do over invest into tempo, like way overly invest in tempo, uh, I can just play the spy and even things up a little bit, gain some card advantage, while at the same time not being punished for the moves that I made. Now that I don't get double creamed anymore, I'm probably just going to switch it up and play my uh, poor flanking infantry and get all the buffs that I can off of that from the siege supports. Get the value in while I can, because I'm pretty sure he's trying to line me up for and Marigold Tailstorm whenever he can. Although this looks like it might be too much tempo for him to carry. Uh, I'm pretty sure he passes here, but in the event that he did play something that went up to, let's say, 35, right? There's still a, uh, there would still be a 20 point difference there. But if I had played the spy first or after he did that, then I could elongate the round without over investing too much. Um, what do, I play the spy, it evens up the total, I gain card advantage, so it keeps him in the round so we play out this round even longer. So one, I don't overinvest, and two, I still win the round, which is what I want. Also, if I can get him to use anything like Gold Weather, it's a Miracle's Hailstorm earlier, as opposed to later, that's also better. Because if he plays it earlier, it's easier for me to deal with over the course of three rounds, but it just passes, which is fine. But if he did play something, then play spy, that's a big one, because it allows you to elongate the round without overinvesting. Because if I had just played like another high tempo play, then I would have been like 30, 35 points ahead. And that's not very good. That's too much. You don't want to be that much ahead. You want to stay as close to your opponent as possible in most situations. Or in most situations, let's say in round one. In round two, it doesn't matter. So long as you don't lose. And then round three, it doesn't matter again unless you win or lose. So going into this round, I don't really need, need to do anything. I could play Spy. Sp uh, playing Spy in the next round is also a solid strategy. I go ahead and play it now. Although when I say it could be good on the next turn, uh, the next round as well, what, uh, what I mean is usually that doesn't seem like right in common knowledge to use a Spy on round three because you're just giving your opponent free points. But I have a Miracle Tailstorm here. If I line it up just right, I can effectively make it so that he only gets something like five points in addition to hitting other units with Miracle Tailstorm. So it's like a double synergy. One, I get an extra target to hit with Miracle Tailstorm. And two, I get to draw a card for like something like a five minus five strength. But I go ahead and play it now. And this is, I didn't really cognitively think of this, but this is pretty good. If he plays Yaven, his point total is higher than mine. So I can just pass here and he has to play one card anyway. Playing, uh, playing my own spy against someone like Spy Nilfgaard, or Nilfgaard in general, rather, uh, would be bad because they can play their Cantarello, which is only 10 strength, and they'd still be ahead. But if it's against any any spy that has 11 strength, I would still be able to pass because they'd still have to pay a card, or else they would lose the game because I would get, even on if a tie gives each player one half of the crown. I believe that's the one that... Mulligans. That's the Mulligan one. I always get this one and the other one mi mixed up. Yeah, yeah, it had to be, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the one you usually mulligan away. He must have got it into his hand after he mulliganed something else. 
So I'm in kind of a predicament here. Uh, I have Roach and I have Blue Strikes Commando in my hand. Or I did. I'd... Oh, okay. Now, now I get it. I mulligan it away and then get Roach. Yeah. Good stuff. That's never good. Usually you're supposed to play something like the Witcher in round one so you can get Roach out of your deck that way. Okay, so uh, he played these Commandos, I think they're called. Yeah, I think one's War Dancer and this is Commando. Or it's the other way around, whichever. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my Cure here because I want to use the Epidemic and get rid of these. It's only a 9 strength play compared to 12 strength plus armor on the Thunderbolt potion, which is what you usually use it for. But uh, again, in this matchup, in this particular matchup, one, I like Disruption because they have more Disruption than me. Which means any Thunderbolt potion I use is going to be less effective, but using an Epidemic against them is very effective. Because I'm taking away units from them, as opposed to building up my own board, which they can just nullify. Also, this prevents this from getting out of control. Because each of those, if he has, if he's playing a more movement-centered archetype, it can be, it's going to be more difficult to get rid of those later. I'm playing Stennis here first. One, because uh, if he if he manages to kill it, I can just Shawnee it back. Two, I want to get this commando out of my deck. Also, this is accounting for any shenanigans like this, where I have to deal with uh, like getting a bear value, or just in general setting my board a little bit so it's a little bit more friendly for the rest of my cards. Because as it is, what I'm trying to do, the whole, my whole game plan on this round... And I decided this from the very beginning of this round is that I want to try and play all my lowest tempo plays first and then hit him with my heavy calories because my heavy calories are the high tempo plays. Those are the cards that are going to be something like 15 strength. I don't want him to be able to maneuver my board in such a way that he can line my my high tempo heavy, heavy cavalry with my low tempo plays or rather with my other high tempo plays. So I want him to only have the low tempo plays to play with. And that it'll make a little bit more sense when you see it. I'm kind of thinking about using Roach. I'm kind of thinking, what should I be doing here? Uh, I end up going with Shawnee because I want to try and get the value out of uh, Kedwini's Seed Support while I can. Because there's not really a whole lot for me to revive here. I didn't play Stannis in the pr previous rounds. I didn't play Trouble Lull in the previous rounds. So I don't have a whole lot of options here. And I don't, I don't think uh, poor flanking inventory is all that great to play here. Or in the rest of the round. So I made the decision to just go with the Seed Support early. And try and get all the value I can out of it. Also of note, there's not really a whole lot to use with my other cards. Like this uh, Redanian Knight. Whatever he's called. Uh, Redanian Knight needs heavy cavalry. So I can just play uh, the Knight right before the cavalry at the very end of the round. I can play Roach just kind of whenever. And then these, I don't really have anything a whole lot to remove. And I also don't have the crewman tag to hit with my Ballistas. And I want to say Marigold Tailstorm in First Light. Either for the end or for the weather, the gold weather. Of which he plays neither. I mean, of which he doesn't play gold weather, but I'm still saving it. It's a pretty good tech because I've been running into a lot of gold weather lately. So uh, from this point on, I can deduce that he's trying to line up my middle row already uh, to get hit with Marigold Tailstorm. And note, he hasn't played Marigold Tailstorm yet, but he can. He can use it and then he can use it twice. I'm just using this play. I make sure and put it on the melee row because I don't want to line up any more on the siege. I mean, on the range. And also, I don't want to put it on the siege because that's where I'm going to put my heavy cavalry. And I don't want to line up all my strength all, all, all at one, all, yeah, all on one row. Okay, so it's 100% confirmed that he's setting up for... Uh, or, I mean, it's 99% confirmed that he's setting up for a miracle play. This could be a really good, really big bluff, but it's not. I mean, I already know how this game turned out, but I'm saying in general, it's probably not just a bluff. You you would only really want to bluff uh, in like round one or something. Or round two, I guess. In some situations. There's really no reason to bluff here. Unless you would try to get me to early surrender, which would be funny. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done or seen someone do that, though. So there's the first one. And again, I'm not playing my heavy cavalry here. I'm just going to play my uh, knight and place on the melee row. And he has no good targets to hit here, right? He has nothing to hit. Okay, he's going to move it now. He's going to move it now. But I'm, 
I'm still not going to use my heavy cavalry because I want to save it. I want. I don't want my knight to be boosted. Uh, I want to just hit his range row first because he's not really going to be playing any other targets for me to hit anyway. And then he finally plays the second Marigold's Hellstorm. He probably should have played Nature's Gift instead, but... And with that, I win. I save my Heavy Calorie for the very end. There you have it. This is more or less what, like, playing the situation relatively optimally. I know he was going to try Marigold Hailstorm, and he actually Marigold Hailstorm twice. He probably should have Marigold Hailstorm first. Oh, you know what? He didn't Marigold Hailstorm in the first round because he didn't have it because he had Nature's Gift into it. I think if he had Marigold Hailstorm, and I'm going to say that a hundred more times, if he played that round one, I think that would have been better because then he would have his ethnic to use it now. Use, doubling it up on the same range row is really not that great. I think that's kind of where it broke down for him. If I think if he had, uh, if he had that card... In the first round, he probably would have won the whole game. Maybe. Anyway, that's it. So one, using spies to elongate rounds. That's kind of a relatively common tactic. Two. Oh, I didn't actually use a spy to elongate the round on a round that I needed to win, but I did introduce the concept. Uh, and two, try and save all your heavy tempo plays for the very end when your opponent cannot possibly react to them. Thank you for watching.